Hello and welcome back to another video from the Historyable YouTube channel. Please like this video and subscribe to the Historyable YouTube channel and click the bell button so you will be alerted when new videos are uploaded. In this video we will cover the Soviet R7 Sapwood, the world's first ICBM, also known by its NATO reporting name SS6 Sapwood. Firstly, this missile was a response to improving US air defences as the Soviet military believed that it was increasingly unlikely that their bomber fleet would be able to penetrate United States and European air defences and deliver their nuclear weapons against targets such as cities and industrial areas. The Soviet Union's response to this need was the R-7 Sapwood. This was a major breakthrough at the time as most missiles of the day had a limited range or basically scale-up versions of the NASA V-2 rocket. It was also an effective propaganda tool due to its large size and the fact that unlike a bomber once fired the missile could not be intercepted and the Americans had no equivalent missile. The R-7 consisted of two stages. The second stage consisted of a central module of four engines and attach, that was attached to four peripheral modules again con that contained four engines that made up the first stage. The four peripheral modules were ejected when they had used up all their fuel. Each engine was an open cycle liquid fuel sustainer engine and each were individually controlled by an onboard guidance system. The accuracy of the missile was quite low and was expected only to hit between 2.5 and 5 kilometers from its intended target. To make up for this fact, the R-7 rocket carried a 5 megaton nuclear warhead. This is equivalent, roughly, to 5 million tons of TNT. This more than made up for its lack of accuracy. The R-7 missile was launched a total of 28 times between 1957 and 1961. However, this was, it was never deployed operationally. A more advanced version of the R-7, called the R-7A, which features an improved range of up to 12,000 kilometers and a better guidance system. This was the only R-7 variant that was actually ever deployed. And even at this, only six uh, launch positions were available and it was deployed beginning in 1959. And it was then retired in 1968 due to more survival missiles entering the infantry that could be launched from underground silos. The major disadvantage of this missile was that it could take up to a day to fuel before launch. And due to the corrosive nature of the fuel in the fuel tank, it had to be either then launched or defueled. And they were considered highly vulnerable to attack, especially from the air. After the retirement of the R-7 and its different variants, all future land-based Soviet missiles were either highly mobile or based in protective silos. One incredible fact about this missile is despite the fact it had a short operational service life due to its major drawbacks, it has still been used today almost 70 years after its first designed in an updated form to launch satellites and manned missions to the International Space Station. That concludes this video. I hope you liked it and, I've, and found it informative. Please like this video and subscribe to the History Bill YouTube channel and click the bell button so you will be alerted when new videos are uploaded. Thanks for listening.